What's up guys, welcome back to Deck Tech for Decks, I'm your host Caleb. If you guys want to support the channel, you can click on that Into the AM link in your description down below, pick up some shirts, you'll get a 10% discount whenever you use my code, and then you'll also be supporting the channel whenever you do that. You can also become a patron if you guys have ever wanted to vote on a Deck Tech for me to cover, that's a solid way to do that. Special shout out to my high contributing patrons, Newsom, you rock. Now, let's get into today's pre-con upgrade with Yuma. And guys, at first glance, this guy was not very interesting to me, and seemed over costed but we can easily reduce that cost and the more I looked at this guy I was like okay this is literally just a three color titania and then from there I was on board the play patterns very simple early game we want to play as many evolving wild effects as possible get as many lands in the graveyard as possible that way we can really start hammering down his casting cost we want to get a lot of deserts on the battlefield and then late game we're going to fire off something like a Nahiri's lithoforming sacrifice all our deserts and make an instant in board state. From there, we're going to cast something that brings all of our lands back to the battlefield and then rinse and repeat for a board state of massive plants. Another thing we are shoving in the deck is Phylath. Guys, I did take 27 cards out of this deck and I am putting 27 cards in this deck. So after this pre-con upgrade, it's going to play completely different from the pre-con. So if you enjoy the work that I do, a like, a comment, and subscribe goes a long way. But let's talk about some of the changes I made and why I made those changes. At first glance, there's a little too much lands. I like 37 just because I think if you're drawing cards, you're drawing into lands, you should be good even in a landfall strategy. Additionally, I added more ways for us to put additional lands into play because especially when we have a lot of ways to play lands from our graveyard, but we don't have a lot of ways to play additional lands, we're just losing out on guaranteed value. If we have something like Evolving Wilds in the graveyard, Graveyard and something like Azusa's Lost But Seeking on the graveyard, that's going to guarantee us three basics out of our deck every single turn. So you can kind of see where that's going to be very useful. And even if we're doing this desert strategy, right, we don't even have to get different lands. Let's say we play a desert, sacrifice the desert, play the same desert again, and now we're just triggering our commander up to three times a turn. That's where the power come from, comes from in this deck. Another thing I saw that the pre-con was lacking was card advantage, so we're going to really hammer in the card advantage. And some of the card advantage we get to use is even from the Thunder Junction set, so that's just going to be solid there. Again, this is going to be a budget pre-con upgrade, but I will put some non-budget options at the end of the video, along with some lands you can include to ensure that we are utilizing our commander to its fullest. Now, let's get into that pre-con upgrade. The way I have this organized is we're going to cover the early game, kind of how we want to set up our commander. We're going to go over the mid game and then we're going to go over how we're going to kill all of our opponents with our massive board state. The first thing we need is lands in our graveyard and lands on the battlefield. So Shijeki Jukai Visionary is perfect early game. It mills us, gets some land cards in our graveyard, and then if we mill any of our key pieces, we can even use Shijeki to get those cards back into our hand. Tato Farmer was a card that was made for this deck. He gives us rad counters that mill us, and then additionally, whenever we mill lands, we get to put them onto the battlefield. So it's it's the perfect early game play. We get lands into our graveyard, we can put those lands onto our battlefield if we miss our land drops, and this is just going to reduce the cost of our commander, getting him onto the battlefield that much faster. Big Score, Unexpected Windfall, and Faithless Looting are amazing cards at getting lands into our graveyard in the early game while ramping us or getting us into the cards that we need. Knight of the Reliquary is going to be really good at fetching those deserts out of our library and putting them onto the battlefield while being able to put lands into our graveyard. Druid class, Azusa Lost But Seeking, Case of the Locked Hothouse, these are amazing cards that pair with the cards that are already in the pre-con. The pre-con was chopped full of cards that allow us to play land cards from our graveyard. The only thing that that was missing was the other half of that that allowed us to play additional lands. We want to get as many triggers off of our commander as possible, and playing additional lands for us to then sacrifice and then reanimate again is the best way to do that. Moving on to the mid game, we want to generate explosive value and start getting some solid card advantage. Tireless Provisioner and Leafkin Avenger are amazing ways to do that. Tireless Provisioner is going to trigger a ton, and then Leafkin Avenger is just going to tap for a ton of mana equal to the creature 
creatures we have with power 4 or greater, which again, our commander can make a ton of those. Rampaging Ballast, again, we're trying to get our creatures in the 4 power mark, because that's just going to synergize better with the deck, and this guy's going to do it perfectly. Entis Restoration for some solid ramp that again, puts land cards in our graveyard, Tireless Tracker, for some solid card advantage, not to mention this guy is just going to get pretty big over the course of a game. Gurux Uprising, Outcast Trailblazer, Greater Good, amazing card draw effects. Greater Good, I did kind of spring for budget-wise. This is a $10 card, but I think it's that good. It's one of those cards that you just slot into a deck, and it just really moves the needle. We're going to be able to sacrifice those massive token creatures, and we're also going to be able to fill our graveyard with lands at the same time. Tadeus Juniper Ascendant. I noticed those tokens we are creating have reach, so now we can kind of have a budget Toski that allows us to draw cards whenever our tokens with reach deal combat damage to a player. Phylath seemed like a no-brainer in this deck. This guy triggers creates a ton of little tokens, and then we can start making those little tokens massive. Not to mention, the tokens our commander creates are also plants. So we drop one land with one of those out, and he's automatically an 8-6 out of nowhere. Felidar Retreat is going to be amazing in this deck. Not only is Vigilance just insanely useful, additionally, we are just going to be able to have this sit on the battlefield and make our creatures very massive very quickly just by the deck doing what it already wants to do anyway. Nahiri's Lithoforming is kind of when we're getting into the late game, right? Now we're trying to create that instant board state. We're going to cast Nahiri's Lithoforming, we're going to sacrifice all of our deserts, and then if you notice, it says we can play an additional amount of land. Lands. So as long as we have a card allowing us to play lands from our graveyard, we can go ahead and shove all of those deserts back onto the battlefield, ready to be sacrificed more. Zoran Orb is not as flashy, but it is very efficient. We just sacrifice all of our deserts, and then we can cast one of our several ways to get all of our lands back from the graveyard. Aftermath Analysis, Splendid Reclamation, World Souls Rage, we even have stuff already in the deck that does that. I just wanted to add a little bit more because this is is going to be the main game plan of the deck. Sacrifice all of your deserts, generate an instant board state, and then go ahead and put all of those deserts back onto the battlefield, rinse and repeat till your opponents are overwhelmed. But let's talk about how we're going to win the game. It kind of sucks to sacrifice all of your lands, bring them all back, generate this massive board state, and then pass the turn. So Ogre Battle Driver is going to get rid of that. Now our plant tokens are going to enter the battlefield, they're going to get haste, and they're going to get buffed plus two. So now they're going to be six twos, they're going to have haste, and we're going to be able to kill some players. Additionally, we are running Warstorm Surge. This is going to be amazing. They enter the battlefield, we get the damage, we can ping down creatures, or we can just ping down players. Moving on, let's talk about some of those non-budget options that are really going to take this deck to the next level. Elvish Reclaimer is very useful early game. We drop him turn one, he starts sacrificing our basic lands, getting those deserts on the battlefield, and reducing our commander's cost at the same time. If you're looking for an upgrade, this is probably one of the best ones. Elemental Bonds, also an amazing pickup here. I'm amazed that this used to be in my budget builds and now it's all the way up to $10, but that's kind of where we're at. This card's amazing for green card advantage, especially when you're trying to make a lot of tokens that have a decent amount of power on them. This card can just carry you to the win, just because now every time you're sacrificing a land, you're additionally drawing a card because you're creating that 4-2 body. Tribute to the World Tree is very similar. Dryad of Illusion Grove, some of those desert can get kind of weird with how you have to tap them for mana so dryad's just going to make that super simple and it's going to be another way for you to play additional lands so him being in the deck just kind of makes sense scape shift kind of goes without saying right we want to play a lot of deserts so just being able to sacrifice all of our lands get all of the deserts put them onto the battlefield kind of just goes crazy and additionally whenever we sacrifice those deserts that we already have on the battlefield we're also creating a board state yeah this card is kind of insane in the the deck. With that being said, guys, I want you to leave in the comment section down below if you want a fully fleshed out non-budget build of this commander. I need to see the demand to make this happen, so light the comment section up. With that being said, that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. I would like to thank my high contributing patrons, Newsome Creator, Chicken Salad, Excessum. You guys are amazing. You really keep the channel going. With that being said, I hope this helped you in your deck building endeavors, and I will see you in the next one.